I learned the most probably from the entries on science, which in general I don't know very much about. And I think that I was most taken by entries having to do with neuroscience and how the brain works. And obviously we know that there's a human proclivity towards sweet, but um, there are all kinds of neurons and channels in the brain that are constantly sending us messages. And it's not just uh, as simple as you eat first with your eyes, these phrases that we have, because we know that if something's beautiful or if it smells good, we're going to want to eat it. But it's, uh, there are some researchers in the UK and also in the States who are looking at very specific things like shapes of sweets and how that affects our perception. And the other one that was totally intriguing was on animal perception of sweets. I'm a real cat lover and I think cats are the most wonderful animals, but it turns out that they can't detect sweet. And it's like, how could there be such a wonderful animal with this great gap in, uh, in their abilities? If, if you think of cats as fuzzy and warm and wonderful creatures, the other end of the spectrum, perhaps my least favorite animal, if you can even call it one, is a cockroach. And what I learned about cockroaches is that experiments were done on them uh, over uh, 25 generations, which is basically a five-year time period, feeding them poison that uh, was very heavily spiked with glucose sugar. The cockroaches who were poisoned and learned, uh, adapted from the experience of all of the other cockroaches around them, adapted so that sugar no longer tasted sweet and desirable to them, but was made bitter, and so they wouldn't eat this sugar, very sugary poison any longer, so this poison was not effective on the cockroaches anymore. And that was just a very weird thing to learn.